Good morning, everyone. In this presentation, I'll have a look at the Australian vertical schools and this school typology. The aim is to understand the successful urban design and planning considerations that help us look at vertical schools as community hubs. Australia approached vertical schools as a solution to increasing residential density and land scarcity in metropolitan areas. We expect that uh, the number of students in New South Wales government schools will increase by 20% from 2016 to um, 2031, and 80% of this population will occur in Sydney. Victoria paints pretty much the same picture. You know, they expect 90,000 extra enrollments from 2016 to 2021. In Sydney, the West Central, Southwest and Central Sydney will feature the highest projected enrollment increase of 63% from 2016 to 2031. So there is no doubt that we'll need to increase school capacity to meet the increasing demand. And because of the land scarcity in inner city areas, the government are increasingly looking to build vertical schools. But why is that we look at vertical schools as community hubs? The common constraints in vertical schools are the school's restricted site for children's physical activity and children's limited access to natural environments. We know from research that the lack of greenery and quality outdoor spaces can negatively affect the incidence of play that is essential to children's development. But the good news is that um, the neighborhood of vertical schools is usually rich enough to offer these amenities to the students. Here we have Inner Sydney High School, which is a 14 story building with school capacity of uh, 1200 students. This high school is located inside of um, the Prince Alfred Park with abundant green space and sports facilities. Uh, as you can see, it has seven sports courts and a swimming pool. It means that the students can uh, potentially have access to these facilities uh, within school hours. New South Wales schools are required to offer at least 10 square meter of open space per student. This school wouldn't meet the minimum requirement unless it gets exclusive access to parts of Prince Alfred Park. Vertical schools, on the other hand, contain some high quality facilities that the community can hire out of school hours. For example, in this case, um, Ultimo Public School, um, uh, New, NSW Department of Education and the local council made agreements on the possibilities for hiring these school facilities. Because vertical schools and their communities become reliant on the use of shared spatial resources, here I argue that their independencies should be considered at different stages of school planning, school design and school management. Here I have analyzed five vertical schools in Australia to explore the urban environmental dimensions that can influence the shared use of facilities. The aim is to lay out the current understandings of vertical schools context and their relationship to the neighborhood, you know, to probe expectations of how these relationships might improve in the future and to demonstrate how a poor quality link can impair the shared use of facilities. Okay, let's just start with South Melbourne uh, Primary School. This is the first high rise state school in Victoria opened in 2018. As you see on the slide, the school is located close to a recreational space and is surrounded by offices and many side road car parks as well as parking lots uh, you know, located in between neighborhood buildings. From the site analysis of the school, we can suggest that the presence of cars parked around the school actually doesn't encourage safe use of the neighborhood recreational space by the primary school age students. Also, there are quite a lot of office buildings, you know, surrounding the site and a few commercial or residential buildings which can discourage the pedestrian population around the school. Uh, from research, we already know that children's active use of urban, urban neighborhoods is positively associated 
with the continuity of pedestrian network, land use mix, and diversity of use, which are not quite you know, strong here. Here in Haleybury, the campus is located directly opposite the Flagstaff Gardens, but the pedestrian connection between the two is not really strong. King Street is usually very busy and uh, the safe crossing from the campus is only available with the traffic light. So we can suggest that for vertical schools to easily use the, ne the nearby natural environments, we need a safe and fortified pedestrian connection. Similar to Haleybury City Campus, uh, Ultimo Public School is located opposite the local park, which is uh, Wentworth Park in this case, um, which is separated from, from the school by a busy street. The main difference is the presence of a pedestrian bridge, which is in red on the slide, and it provides uh, a safe travel from, from the school to the park during the school hours. In contrast, Inner Sydney High is located inside of the Prince Alfred Park with abundant green space and sports facilities. Children can access the park safely without any need uh, to cross a road. Quite similarly, Botanic High School is linked to the parklands with multiple pedestrian connections. The students can have safe access not only to the abundant green space in the botanic gardens, but also to the museum, herbarium, conservatory, Adelaide Zoo, state library, and performing arts facilities. So we can suggest that corners of neighborhood parks are more efficient locations for vertical schools um, compared to the opposite streets because they can encourage safer and more convenient use of facilities located in the parks. Okay, how about communities use of school facilities? You know, how does the urban environments around the school influence the children's and families use of, um, you know, use of a school in out of school hours? In case of South Melbourne Primary School, uh, the school's full-size indoor basketball and netball court can be used by the community. But the school is not really located in a highly walkable site. It's surrounded by industrial buildings and M1 motorway cut the school catchment area. The community may have easy access to the sports courts close to Seoul Green Reserve, you know, uh, south of the area, being surrounded by residential buildings or a Darklands sports courts, you know, north of the area if they live north of M1 motorway. Also, families living east the school catchment area have more convenient access to the Royal Botanic Garden than the school facilities. A similar case in uh, Inner Sydney High, Mel uh, members of the community is able to hire out uh, the school's multi-purpose indoors, um, indoor sports facilities, but the school is close to the edges of the catchment, um, which means that children from the north of the area will be traveling distance as far as four kilometers to get to school from, um, from home. The literature shows that children's active use of neighborhood amenities is negatively linked with distances to these facilities. Okay, the analysis here shows that for vertical schools to be community hubs, there are multiple dimensions that should be considered in the development of surrounding urban neighborhoods. Um, you know, the land use in school neighborhood, the pedestrian network connectivity, the location of the school in the school catchment area, and road, road rules and services can influence the shared use of resources. The volume and speed of traffic and the presence of car parks on the site may raise parental concern, uh, which itself influences children's independent use of um, the neighborhood facilities. So future research can further explore the scoping of the key issues arising from the analysis of these cases to better understand how the integration of vertical schools in their neighborhood enhances shared use of facilities for, for a growing bond you know, between the schools and their communities. Okay, thank you very much for listening to this presentation.